The next part we need to know of this thing called the drift velocity. Now, if we apply a voltage across this copper wire, this is a positive and this is negative, there's going to be this electric field. Remember, the electric field direction is uh, the direction which is felt by a small positive test charge, so it will be to the left. But we know that the things that are carrying the charge are electrons. So these electrons are actually moving to the right. Now, when you turn the, the voltage on, they don't fly through the metal at the speed of light, which is the way that some people think. They're basically, they have a very slow average velocity because their movement is actually quite fast, but they bump into things, they get deflected. So the progress is actually quite slow. So we have what's called the drift velocity. It's the average velocity that they have as they move through the wire due to the potential difference. And we have to look at a derivation of this. So we have to look at the drift velocity or the drift speed, it's sometimes known. So this is our, our copper wire. And these are our charges, which are basically electrons which are sitting inside this copper wire. And they're free to move around. And they will move around once we apply the voltage. Now, let's define some terms. We have the cross-sectional area, which is the area of the pipe here, the area of the, the wire. We have a number of charges. And basically, we need to know N, which is the number of charges per unit volume. So there's a volume of um, wire here that the, the charges will be drifting this way. V, the drift velocity. And Q is the charge on each electron. So, so this is the distance uh, D in this volume. Now, let's say all this volume of charge moves to the right. Now, all this volume have moved to the right, so basically all this charge has moved to the right. We need to find out how much charge this is, and it depends on these terms here. So, this random charge, this random drift, is uh, the drift velocity. So, let's look at some terms here. The volume is equal to the area times by the distance that it's travelled. So, that volume of uh, charged particles has moved to the right here. So it's that distance, but we know the distance is equal to Vt. So the area times Vt gives the volume. Now, if we know that there are n um, charge carriers per unit volume, the number of charge carriers is basically going to be n times by the volume. This is the total charge that moves. But we know that the volume is equal to AVt. So n times by AVT gives the total number of charges. We want to find out not so much the total number of charges, we want to find out the total charge that moves, because this will help us to find the current. The total charge that moves is the total number of charges times the charge on each charge carrier. So it's going to be this, it's going to be the charge, which is basically the number of charges times the charge on each charge carrier, which is Q. And we know that the current is equal to the rate of flow of this charge. So it's the change of Q in time. So it's basically this expression divided by time. Um, but we already have a term for T there, and we're dividing by T. So this current is equal to V A N Q. V is a drift velocity. A is a cross-sectional area of the wire. N is the number of charge carriers per unit volume. Q is a charge on each volume. And in the data booklet, it's written this way. I is equal to NAVQ. Quite often, you need to rearrange this to find out what V is. You're told what the current is, the number of charge carriers per unit volume, and so on. And you have to find the V. And I found a web page where we have a little exercise to do on that. So here we have it, the drift velocity of charge carriers. Um, it's rearranged this already for you. It tells you that the, the free electron density, in other words, the number of particles per unit volume, is 8.5 times 10 to the 28 electrons per meter cubed. Good. Now let's make up a, a diameter. Let's say the diameter is, um, let's say, 2 millimeters. Um, and the, what's the area going to be? You're going to find out that now is equal to 3.14 times 10 to the negative 6. Um, what is the current going to be? Let's say the current is at uh, 10 amps, 
and it basically finds you shows that the drift velocity is 2.337 times 10 to the negative 4 meters per second or you could say 84 centimeters per hour which isn't very fast so the electrons are actually drifting through at a very slow speed the speed that they're traveling at the instantaneous velocity of any electron is actually quite fast but it's not going all in the right direction there's resistance it's bouncing off the particles which are in the in the metal we could try another value let's try one amp and what is that going to be that's going to be 8.4 centimeters per hour so there you have it I think they will ask you a question like this they will give you these parameters and they will ask you to calculate the um, the drift velocity.